Hello everyone. It's a great pleasure to extend to you our warmest welcome on behalf of Department of Mathematics, Gujarat University, at this very special gathering. It is our great privilege to have with us the Abel Prize Laureate 2020, Professor Hillel Flustenberg, Professor Emeritus at Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Israel, who will give a talk on ergodic correspondence and combinatorics. The Abel Prize often referred to as the Nobel Award of Mathematics, was established to recognize outstanding contributions in the field of mathematics in commemoration of the brilliant 19th century Norwegian mathematician okay. Niels Henrik Abel. Abel Memorial Fund was established on 1st January 2002, and it is administered by the Norwegian Ministry of Education and Research. The Abel Prize for the year 2020 goes to Professor Hiller Frustenberg from Israel and Professor Gregory Margulis from Yale University, USA, jointly for pioneering the use of methods from probability and dynamics in group theory, number theory, and combinatorics. Raise this occasion today, we have the eminent personalities from the education fraternity. We have with us respected Sri Bhupendra Singh Chudasama. Honorable Minister of Education, Government of Gujarat, Srimati Vibhavri Ben Dave, Honorable Minister of State Education, Shri Professor Dr. Himan Shupandya, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Gujarat University, Dr. Jagdish Bhausar, Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor, Gujarat University, Professor R.J. Verma, Director, School of Sciences and Head of Zoology Department, Professor Dr. Nita H. Shah, Head of the Department of Mathematics, Gujarat University. Dr. Ravi Gore, Associate Professor, Department of Mathematics, and Professor N. P. Shrimali, Associate Professor, Department of Mathematics. Let us start the program with University Song. We request our technical team to present Gujarat University Song. Vandan Abhinandan. Vandan Abhinandan Vandan Abhinandan Vandan Abhinandan Vandan Abhinandan Gujarat University Apni Gujarat University Apni Vidya Tanu Tapovan Vandan Abhinandan Vandan Abhinandan विश्व सकल माविल से स्नेह संप साकार निसाथे देती तू सन्मति सौना साथ ने संगाथे सव सिद्ध करे उन्नति प्रेम बंदुता समान ताना पल पल प्रसरे स्पंदन वंदन अभिनंदन Thank you very much. To begin this program, I would like to request Professor Dr. Nita H. Shah, Head of the Department of Mathematics, for opening remarks and introduction of Professor Hillel Festival. Professor Nita H. Shah. Um, Ma'am, you need to unmute yourself. Department of Mathematics, Gujarat University welcomes respected Sri Bhupendra Si Chudasma, Honorable Minister, Education Minister, Gujarat, Srimati Vibhavari Madam, Honorable Minister of State, Education, Professor Dr. Himansu Pandya, 
Vice Chancellor of Gujarat University, Dr. Jagdish Bausar, Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor, Gujarat University, Director of, of School of Sciences, Professor R.J. Verma, and my colleagues. I welcome Professor Hilal Frustenberg, Abel Prize Laureate of 2020 for the year 2020. Professor invented random walk techniques to investigate mathematical objects such as groups and graphs, and in so doing, introduced probabilistic methods to solve many open problems in group theory, number theory, combinatorics, and graph theory. A random walk is a path consisting of a successive succession of random steps and the study of random box is a central branch of probability theory, which is also quite useful and quite important in the statistics. The works of Frustenberg have demonstrated the effects and effectiveness of crossing boundaries between separate mathematical disciplines and brought down the traditional wall between pure and applied mathematics. Frustenberg stunned the mathematical world by the ingenious use of probabilistic method and random box to solve deep problems in diverse areas of mathematics and mathematical sciences. Welcome, Professor Hillel, to India virtually. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your opening remarks. Now, moving ahead, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Himanshu Pandya, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Gujarat University, for the welcome address at this inaugural session. Professor Dr. Himanshu Pandya. Sir, please unmute yourself. Please unmute Sir, yourself. Yeah, I made the same mistake what you, what you did. Uh, welcome, Professor. Welcome to Gujarat University virtually. How are you? <laughs> Sorry, you... Yeah, it's, 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 it's been a pleasure to welcome you here in Gujarat University campus virtually. And let's hope that someday, you know, it, uh, the things become mm. normal and we would uh, be able to call you personally, physically to the campus. Thank you. So yes, sir. I must say that thank 10 you, years thank ago. You, thank you so uh, much for, for uh, accepting our invitation and, uh, you know, giving us the insights of the graph theory, how these things are working for the social upliftment and how we can go ahead with the understanding of the uh, this uh, mathematical, uh, uh, you know, clusters, how we can go with the inventory and social models and so many things. I'm a man of biology. I cannot talk much on the mathematics. But what I read about you, it is phenomenal. Sir, we respect you for your work, your, your dedication to the mathematics and to evolve with the, uh, the practices in mathematics where we can understand the basic mathematics with the applied mathematics. Really wonderful, remarkable. We salute your work and we congratulate uh, from the soil of Gujarat, uh, which is a land of Mahatma Gandhi and Sardar Vallabhai Patel. Uh, they have dedicated their whole life for the betterment of mankind. The same way you are working as a professor of emeritus in the University of uh, Jerusalem. Thank you so much for joining us. Honorable uh, Minister, sir, Honorable Minister, madam, respected madam Anju Sharma, our dear friends and colleagues on virtual field. It's been a matter of pride and privilege for all Gujarat Universitians, those who have arranged this particular lecture of Abel Laureate, Professor Hillel Fersenberg. When we say mathematics, it is always known to solve the issues related to the clusters and happening around us. But when it comes to the practicality, it is very difficult to implement those tools in the real life. But when somebody who is dedicatedly working for decades 
to solve the mathematical problems and to relate this mathematical problems to the real life it requires lot of guts and efforts and hard work to prove such theories to utilize and for better life on this earth i will not talk much because we have to listen so many people especially professor hillel here we have many associates in uh, university of jerusalem we have uh, we have sonia filsufidas she is there working with the biochemical modules and she is associated with gujarat university then we have professor yurik there in the university of uh, jerusalem he is also working on the statistical aspects of bioinformatics and now we are associated with professor hillel so this is the third uh, connection with uh, university of jerusalem where we are working very closely with university of jerusalem uh, with this uh, i will uh, conclude my speech here and once again welcoming professor hillel to this gujarat university the great gujarat university thank you very much thank you very much honorable vice chancellor sir for spending your valuable time with us thank you so much ladies and gentlemen we have with us shrimati anju sharma ias honorable principal secretary education gujarat who is a member of the prestigious indian administrative service and has been serving in various departments of government of gujarat at senior leadership positions for last 30 years at this moment i request you ma'am for your special address please welcome shrimati anju sharma thank you so much uh, rohan honorable minister education shri bupendra chudasma ji honorable minister of state for education ravi benji and of course the chief guest of this entire talk professor hilil trustenberg dr himansh kupandya vice chancellor of gujarat university dr jagdish bhavsar pro vc dr neeta ben dr rj verma it's really a matter of privilege for me to be present here in this talk today when we have such an eminent personality with us an able prize winner hilel dr hilel prasenberg i was just reading about him and i was really really impressed to know that i was really really impressed to know that he gave his theory of a uh, 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 topological proof that integers contain infinitely many prime numbers when he was still an undergraduate student now this is a feat that not very many can achieve and this is just phenomenal in 1955 and i'm sure 70 years back you will be remembering your times when you may be too young as an undergrad student and achieving this as an undergraduate student when students don't even know how to get hold of their textbooks and understand their textbooks you achieved such a thing is really really a source of inspiration for all the viewers all the students who are here mathematics has been a very important and of course personally a very dear subject to me unfortunately due to some personal reasons i could not pursue uh, mathematics but then even till now i have a a very strong inclination for mathematics and that shows when i um, also do my policy work and uh, other things because i two three days back only is talking to somebody that when it comes to maths i have to it it just brings the natural person in me and maths is something it's very close to philosophy it's very close to languages and there is a mathematical uh, there is a mathematical um, angle i would say to every thing in the world and they say that we even have a divine ratio in the body and that's i think one is to 1.6 or something like that if i i'm not if i'm not wrong or something but and everything can be learned can be understood with the help of mathematics even music is highly highly calibrated from a mathematical point of view and people have done research 
um, between uh, trying to find out how music moves from uh, uh, on the basis of mathematical equations. And uh, probably that, because Beethoven, who could not hear, could create such uh, music. And that can only come when music has something, something mathematical to it and something more than just the sound to it. And sound itself is a mathematical concept. So it's intricate and it's beautiful. Um, it's pleasure for me to be here. Uh, sorry, it's pleasure for me to be here in your presence and listen to your conversation. And uh, I think all our students, faculty members, and all of us personally will get highly benefited by your presence. Thank you so much for accepting this invitation of Team Gujarat uh, for coming in this conference. And we seek your blessings ever after. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your really influential message. And we are glad to know about your thoughts connecting mathematics, despite of not pursuing further studies in mathematics. So thank you so much for uh, sharing your valuable views with us. Thank you. It's our pleasure to have Honorable Minister of State, Women and Child Development, Primary and Higher Education and Pilgrimage Department, Srimati Vibhavri Ben Dave, who is a strong and dynamic female representative in the Legislative Assembly. Ajna Ati Mahatwana Prasange, Vibhavri Madam Apni Vachya Upasthi Chhe, Apna Sohmo Chattwa Gya Chhe, Apne Aukariya Chhe, Ma'am, we request you for your special address, Srimati Vibhavri Ben Dave. Namaste. Good morning, everybody. Virtually, uh, mathematics na webinar seminar ni andar upasthi tapra saun adaniya. Senior Most Cabinet Mantri Shri, Amara saun Amar Dashak, Eva Bupendra Sehji Chura Samaji, Amara Principal Secretary Anju Ji, Iman Shupandya Vice Chancellor Shri. Jagdish Bhai Bhausar Ane Ajay Virtually Jena Mate Apri Pase Ho Atwatem the Sambal of Apra Mate Sona Mate Gauroche Eva Eminent Speaker Mr. Heliel Jo Laureates twenty twenty Punche Ane A age Emne Joya Pache Ulage Cheke Anjubene Jem Kayuem Bo Nani Umarti Emne Kup Saras Menat Kariane आप पद्धति पहुंचा चाहे हमने ज्ञान में हमने पसंद जब बंदर चाहे आपला सुधी पहुंचवान हो चाहे एवा स्पीकर श्री अने गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी ना प्रोफेसर स्टूडेंट्स एमिनेंट स्पीकर्स एंड अदर स्टूडेंट्स आज अपने बहुत सरस एक कार्यक्रम में जोड़ा है चाहे हमने गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी ना भी नंदन अपन वेटला विविध प्रोग्राम होए, ऐना मटे पने उरो को खूब आगल पढ़िया ने कामगिरी करे चे, विद्यार्थियों ने उपयोग खूब बजा जे प्रोजेक्ट आत्मलिदा चे मनु आए प्रोजेक्ट चे, आविष्कृते जीओ साथे जोड़ा है अने आईएएस अने आईपीएस ने ट्रेनिंग्स निवात होए के डीआरडीओ साथे कोलैबोरेशन स्टार्टअप ने प एवा बता कार्यक्रम हाथ धराए चे मनु एक कार्यक्रम क्योंकि गणित जो चे मैथमेटिक्स जो चे ये आपला सामान्य रिते सामान्य ग्रहणित से शुरू करी अने एमिनेंट कोई पन व्यक्ति होए ना मटे खूब अगत्य नोटला मटे चे के ग्रहणीय पन गणित ना ध्यान ऊपर रखे ना कोता नहीं गणत्री करवानी होए चे भारतीय संस्कृति अने एने सारी रीते मैनेजमेंट करवानु भारतीय महिलाओं सारी रीते जानती हुए चापड़ बता जानी है चीज़ अने भारत मैथमेटिक्स में विश्व नी अंदर साउथ ही वधारे सारी रीते हमने पोता ना भारतीय संस्कृति नी परंपराओं झाड़ भी अने कर रुचे गणित विषय नो महत्वपूर्ण भाग जो कोई होए तो ये बदाज भागों न साथे साथे याग्नेवल कलरुषी होए कात्यायन होए पानी नहीं होए ब्रह्मगुप्त होए पिंगल होए क्या बास्कराचारी होया बदहज लोग को एक गणित क्षेत्र खूब सारी कामगिरी करी आजे विश्व विजय देशों एनो उपयोग करी रहा चाहे संख्या नहीं सुन्यनी अंक गणित वर्गमूल घनमूल भूमिति त्रिकोणमिति बीज गणित 
વગેરે જેવા ઘણા ક્ષેત્રોની અંદર પ્રાદુર્ભાવ ભારત દ્વારા કરવામાં આવ્યો છે વિશ્વના પ્રાચીનતમ ગ્રંથો હોય એ જ્યોતિષ હોય કે ખગોળ હોય આ બધાની અંદર આપણે ગણિત ને આપણા ઋષિ મુનિઓએ ખુબ સારી રીતે એને ધ્યાન ઉપર લીધેલું સમય જતા આપણે ગણિત ને થોડું ધ્યાન ઓછું આપ્યું ને આજે આપણે જાણીએ છીએ કે ગણિત ને બીજા વિશ્વના બીજા દેશો ની અંદર વધારે પ્રાધાન્ય મળ્યું છે આજે આપણી પાસે ઇન્ડિયન નહીં પરંતુ જેરુસલેમ યુનિવર્સિટી ના લોરિયટ ટ્વેન્ટી ટ્વેન્ટી જે છે એમને આપણે આજે આપણી વચ્ચે ઉપસ્થિત થયેલા જોઈએ છે પરંતુ મને વિશ્વાસ છે કે જો ગુજરાત આ રીતે સારી રીતે કામ કરતું રહેશે તો આવતા દિવસોની અંદર લોરિયટ્સમાં મેથ્સ ની અંદર પણ ગુજરાત યુનિવર્સિટી અથવા તો ગુજરાત નો કોઈ સ્ટુડન્ટ હશે એવો મને વિશ્વાસ છે અને એટલી સારી રીતે આપણે બધા જ જયારે મુખ્યમંત્રી શ્રી આપણને ખુબ પ્રોત્સાહન આપી રહ્યા હોય અને ભૂપેન્દ્રસિંહ જી જેવા એક માર્ગદર્શન આપણી પાસે હોય માર્ગદર્શક આપણી પાસે હોય તો આપણે એ કરવું અશક્ય નથી આજના સમયની અંદર કોમ્પ્યુટર ની ગણતરી હોય કે કોઈ પણ ઇન્ટેલિજન્ટ આર્ટિફિશિયલ ઇન્ટેલિજન્ટ ની વાત હોય આ બધી જ જગ્યાએ ગણિત નું ખૂબ મહત્વ છે અને આ ગણિત ને આપણે આપણા ક્ષેત્ર ની અંદર પણ ખુબ સારી રીતે એને પ્રસ્થાપિત કરીએ એવી શુભેચ્છા આપું છું ખુબ સરસ કાર્યક્રમ ની અંદર ખુબ જ્ઞાની વ્યક્તિ કે જે એને સાંભળવા એ પણ એક લાહો હોય છે એમને આપણે વર્ચ્યુઅલી હાજર કર્યા છે અને જેમ હિમાંશુભાઈ કહ્યું એમ આવતા દિવસોમાં આપણે એમને ફિઝિકલી પણ ગુજરાત ની અંદર આ યુનિવર્સિટીમાં આવવા માટેનું આમંત્રણ આપીશું ફરી વખત તમને બધા મને આ કામમાં જોડી બદલ આભાર અસ્તુ વંદે ભાઈ Thank you very much ma'am for your valuable thoughts. You have rightly emphasized the importance of mathematics in various fields of life. Thank you for your well wishes. Thank you. On this very special occasion, we are blessed with the presence of respected Shri Bhupendra Singh Chudasama, Honorable Minister of Education, Gujarat State, who has always been keen to promote academic activities which result in the overall growth of the students. At this moment, we request you to share your valuable views and thoughts. My cabinet colleague, Vibhavari Ben Dave, my colleague, Anju Ben Sharma, our respected guest, Professor Hillel, Vice Chancellor, Eman Subhai, Pro Vice Chancellor, Jagdish Bhai, Actually, I am also not a student of mathematics. I am a student of English literature. Even though, as being a minister, we have to take interest in all the subjects. First of all, I would like to congratulate Gujarat University Iman Subhai's team for arranging this type of a webinar and inviting a laureate like uh, Professor Hillel Fastenberg. Um, Professor Hillel, for your kind information, I have visited Jerusalem twice. I had been in 94 and 96 both. Actually, I am very much impressed by Israel water conservation activity and agriculture, particularly horticulture, agriculture both. Really, we are also in Gujarat doing the same pattern in agriculture. Today's subject is uh, mathematics. It is very useful subject in our uh, life, in all the factors, sectors, aspects. Without mathematics, we cannot, we cannot run a day even. My colleague appropriately mentioned that the math subject originally 
is from India, Arya Bhatt and etc. Engineering, science and technology contribute to great inventions in the world with all experts in all those fields having outstanding math skills. The importance of mathematics is not only crucial for scientists or engineers, but it helps develop skills also, such as analyzing data, seeking evidence, recognizing patterns every day. Mathematics helps in analyzing thinking, investigating the truth and drawing conclusions and is essential in this world of constant change. If we are able to understand mathematics and arrive at logical solution, we will be able to prepare our minds when we real when we have real problems. We can look for the best logic, see the possible solutions and relate the data we have to reach the conclusion. Mathematics allows us to reason clearly and logically, taking into account real data that can be verified. Really, it is a very interesting subject and really we have an expert in the world like Professor Hillel. Lastly, I had with meetings nine laureates in 17 January, only for the kind information of Professor Hillel. It is very difficult to have one laureates, very difficult, but I was lucky to meet in our vibrant Gujarat summit nine Nobel laureates together and we are also lucky to have uh, great laureates like you. Again, I welcome you on behalf of my department, my government, uh, virtually and uh, invite you physically also in the future. I thank you very much. Uh, Iman Subhai and uh, Jagdish Bhai, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister of Education. Thank you very much, sir, for your kind words and motivational speech. We are heartily thankful for your presence at this event and your blessings. Also, once again, we express our sincere thanks and gratitude to all the respected dignitaries for spending their valuable time with us for this inaugural session of special e-talk by Professor Hilal Fashtanbrath. And now the moment you all have been waiting for has arrived. We humbly request today's eminent speaker, Professor Emeritus, Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Israel, who has won the Israel Prize, regarded as the top honor in Israel, the Wolf Prize in Mathematics, and now the recipient of Abel Prize Laureate 2020, Professor Hillel Frustenberg. Over to you, sir. Yes. <clears throat> so, good morning, everyone who's present. And uh, I have to thank my hosts very much for this very, very kind introduction and for the very kind invitation, which is uh, quite an honor for quite an honor for me that, uh, to be here, as you mentioned, to be here virtually. And uh, I may say that 10 years ago, I was actually physically in, in India and in Hyderabad for the International Congress. And since then, I haven't been, been in India, although before that, I've been here several times because there, to work with some of the eminent mathematicians in uh, at the Tata Institute. And at any rate, um, the emphasis in my talk will not be so much probability theory as as in dynamics, uh, particularly area of dynamics called ergodic theory. 
which is related, uh, probability theory is somewhat in the background there of dynamical systems, which are and um, part of the part of dynamics comes from, you might say, uh, random effects. And this will come in later in our in my discussion. The emphasis will be more on the relationship between between uh, dynamics, ergodic theory, and um, number theory and combinatorics. And the emphasis will be on this con on this connection, on this correspondence between uh, between two different two different areas. So I would, um, I can ask for the first uh, slide uh, um, here. Yeah. Is it possible to put on the uh, the slides the uh, uh, that were prepared? Yes, sir. I'm sharing. I'm sharing. Yeah. At any rate, the um, in the first slide, which uh, I hope will appear, um, I give the basic definition. But I, I'm sharing. I'm sharing. Next slide. Slide number one. Um, yeah. If I can, I can share it with the, um, um, uh, perhaps everyone else sees the slide. I don't, um, it should be on my screen as well. Are the slides there? Uh, So, Madam, who is sharing the slide? Uh, you or Professor? Yeah, yeah it's loading now. Okay. Yeah. Be large. That's fine. Oh, very good. Very good. Okay. So the. Um, so here I define what is meant, what we will mean when we speak about a dynamical system. Um, <clears throat> the basic, basic components of a dynamical system. You have there is a, there's a space, a topological space X for us usually a compact metric space. It's this or the state space of, in 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 applications. It's a space of all possible. It's a space of all possible states of a physical system. And then there's a transformation T, the transformation T taking of X into itself. It represents what happens in what happens to a state in, in one unit of time. From a point X, you go to a point Tx, T of X. The, uh, that's the motion, that's the movement within the dynamical system. We will always assume that T is a continuous transformation. And we denote the system by the pair X and T. Now more um, in ergodic theory, the basis is still dynamical systems, but we have what we call a measure preserving system. The, in other words, there's some, the, in this movement from, from X to TX, um, the, the shape that you have a transformation of the space, which can be, change things very much as in this small picture beneath, below it i have something that looks like a circle moving into something in time one all the 
all the points from the circle move into this worm-like looking um, figure. But what is preserved, there is the volume is preserved. It is an ocean of measure, is a, a measure preserved. And the measure denoted by mu, it's a probability measure. And the condition of measure preservation is that mu of the of t inverse of a, the t inverse of a are the points that move into a, a at, at, in unit time. The measure of that t inverse a is the same as the measure of a. So something is preserved. And this turns out to be a very important, important property when this is when this is is satisfied the uh, this came into mathematics or into the theory of uh, dynamics through a th theorem of Liouville who, who showed that in, in in Hamiltonian systems the volume in the state space is actually preserved by this transformation so now the um, we'll move on to the next slide um, the next slide we discuss the one of the important notes, sort of in some sense, the main thing that one looks at in dynamics is the orbit of a point. Given a point x, we, the orbit we call the orbit the x, and what happens to x after one unit of time, t x, then t squared x, and so on. This is an infinite sequence of points in the same inside the uh, inside the state space. Right now, the what does uh, ergodicity mean? We will uh, um, explain that, but the uh, um, I think perhaps I had the ind indicated that in the previous slide. I should have. In any case, a system is er ergodic. A measure-preserving system is ergodic if, from any any set of positive measure and any other set of positive measure. In some time, you will move. There will be a point in the first set that will move to the second set. In other words, which means really that the points move all over, all over the space. And the lemma indicates quite explicitly um, one of the properties of ergodicity, which which helps us think about it. If we have an ergodic system and a metric, compact metric space. And assume that the space relates is that the measure is really full in the space. Every open set in the space has positive measure. The, the lemma says that with the exception of a set of measure zero, probability zero, the orbit of that point is going to be dense in the space that. I start with a very, perhaps the simplest example of, of an ergodic transformation is well-known irrational rotation of a circle. So here our space is the unit circle. I can think of the points as being complex numbers e to the i theta. And what happens to e to the i theta is that it gets multiplied, it gets multiplied by another complex number of absolute value one. And the angle theta is increased by two pi alpha. And alpha is, is assumed to be an irrational number. And another way of explaining this, if I identify I can identify points in the circle with the angle uh, in radians, then what we require, or radians divided by two pi, then we're adding the angle is add to the angle we add alpha. Here I'm thinking of the angle in, in uh, to make it to make it simple, we we think of instead of two pi, we think of of, of one as being the unit the Going around the circle entirely, so we can identify the circle with the with an interval from zero to one, and the um, and alpha is then simply an is simply an, uh, an irrational number, and what's and uh, Kronecker proved then such a system uh, much that the well the the numbers n alpha this is of course modulo one numbers n alpha are dense in the in the interval. And that's not hard to see because they're infinitely because alpha is irrational. These points are all distinct. If they're distinct, that some of them have to get very close together. And say, if n alpha and m alpha are close together, then m minus n alpha is close to zero. And then we double that and triple that, and so on. We get denser and denser sets in the in the um, uh, unit interval. So that's Kronecker's theorem. And what happens is that every orbit is dense. And again, you have the ergodicity in the sense that every, if you take every 
any set of positive measure and any other set of positive measure, here it's the big measure that's we're dealing with, which is preserved under this transformation, then you'll move, there will be a point which goes from one set to the other set in a number, in a finite number of steps. Okay, can we have the next slide? Here I want to define sort of the main, one of the main ideas of, of, of this talk, and that's the idea of, of dynamic correspondence. And, um, and the, the, the idea of how this is used is in, in uh, um, it can be stated in a theorem. Well, um, important fact is the following theorem. That if I have any, I, I want to talk about something that's on the integers. So if I have a bounded function on the integers, f of n, then there's some dynamical system and a point in, the, in this space x and a continuous function on x such that f, the f of n, the sequence that we see on the integers, is reading this function f on an orbit, on the orbit of the point x zero. So I, I can view my, I, somehow I can, any, any function on the integers or any sequence I like can be identified with what hap, what's happening in some, in some dynamical system along the orbit of some point. And the main idea of this, of this whole correspondence is that we can learn about this sequence f of n by studying the dynamical system. So I want to, I want to give a, devote some time to an explicit example of, um, of this, of the use of this correspondence or the realization of a, of a sequence, um, as, as reading a, reading a certain function or parameter on a dynamical system along an orbit. So what's the theorem on the face of it has nothing to do with dynamics. I take an irrational number and give an epsilon bigger than zero. I can solve the, the Diophantian inequality, n squared alpha minus m, n and m are integers, should be as small as, 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 small as I like. So I formulate this on the, on the unit interval, I take numbers modulo one, then n square alpha is the same as n square alpha minus m, which means that n square alpha modulo one is very small, can be made as small as I like. Another way of saying this is that there's some sequence where the n squared alpha, along that sequence, n squared alpha goes to zero. And the fact that n alpha, for some integer n alpha, I can get some integer n, I can get n alpha to be very small. That's actually Kronecker's theorem, the one that we mentioned just before. What's less trivial, what's less obvious is that n squared alpha can be made to go to zero. Incidentally, what I say here is also true for n cube and third and much more generally. And the idea that I, that, that's brought here can be applied to, to these more general situations. So at any rate, we want to, we want to prove this using dynamics. So to, um, so we have to produce a system. What kind of dynamical system would produce the sequence n squared alpha? So we say the, um, actually, if you look at the second line of the note, it, uh, the, um, I want, I want, I look at the pair n alpha n squared alpha. And I want to see how that is transformed into the next point, which is, which is n plus one alpha n plus one squared alpha. Of course, we're interested in n squared alpha, but it turns out to be useful to think of it together with n alpha. So one pair goes into the next pair by the transformation, which is defined on the previous line, since n plus one squared alpha is n squared alpha plus two n alpha plus alpha. So if I define a transformation of this two torus, this is the product t with itself, t squared, um, t stands for torus, um, then t, I take t now standing for transformation. On the first variable, I add alpha. Theta goes into theta plus alpha, but phi goes into phi plus two theta plus alpha. Now, this, it isn't just trans, translated. The translation depends on the theta. So this is called a skew product. We'll be talking about that later on. And if you think of what's actually happening on the torus, it's sort of being rotated twisted around as you, go, as, as you go along. 
So with this transformation, t takes n alpha to t takes n alpha and squared alpha to the following point, which means that if we start with zero zero, with the zero zero point, then in n steps we'll get to n alpha and squared alpha. So the um, now so then I can if that's the case, then what it, it would be enough. To, we want to prove that we can get n squared alpha as close as we like to zero, but in fact we can get the pair zero zero as close as we like to zero, to zero, zero itself. And that, another way of saying that in dynamic terms, we now have this dynamical system, is to say that the point zero, zero is a recurrent point for, for the transformation. Now, can I have the next slide? Um, the next slide we introduce, um, Um, yeah, so here, here I, 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 first I want to say that this is an example of this, um, of this correspondence that we were speaking of before, namely, here our sequence is uh, the sequence on the integers is e to the 2 pi i n squared alpha. Here I want to look at it again as a uh, as as numbers in, in, as numerical um, sequence, and the function on the on the state space which gives us this this particular sequence, when I apply it to the orbit of zero zero, is the function f of theta phi is just e to the two pi i phi. So that along the orbit n alpha and squared alpha, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at e to the 2 pi i n squared alpha. So the, here's my, that's my, uh, that's my dynamical system. That's my function. And the point x0 is, is 0, 0. Now, in fact, the, uh, and we, what we wanted to show that the point 0, 0 is a, rec is a recurrent point and actually, um, in this particular system, the, the advantage of looking at this system is that dynamically, it has a in, very interesting property that, in fact, every point in this system is recurrent. And that's and we'll, I'll try to show how one proves that. The um, um, this will, um, the uh, to prove this, we use a, a notion which appears, which is very important in in uh, dynamic theory, abstract theory, dynamical systems. And that's the notion of a minimal set. Suppose you have a dynamical system X on a space X with the transformation T. And now a subset of that system is called minimal. If by itself, if I took, if I, if I restricted things to, to that subset Y by itself, it would be invariant. In other words, that T of Y is contained in Y. So now that the dynamics inside Y just stays inside Y. We stay inside Y. And we assume y is closed, which means that it's also a compact space. And we want, so it's an invariant closed set. And it's minimal in the sense that if I have a smaller set, which is also closed and invariant under the transformation, it, it, it's either empty or, or, or it's all of, all of y. Which means, by the way, that every point, if I have a point in, in this minimal set, if I take the orbit of that point, it's got to be dense in the set because the uh, because the closure of that point is invariant and is an invariant, invariant closed set. And if I, if the set is minimal, then uh, then I must be getting everything. So from this we get the lemma that's stated here that if um, if I have a minimal set in in a dynamical system, then every point is recurrent. <clears throat> well, that's the argument that I just gave. Let's look instead of the orbit of y. Let's take the orbit of T of Y. So the, the points that will be there are not, Y itself may not be there, but T Y, T square Y, and so on. And I take the closure of that set. That's a closed set, and it's invariant under T, because from T Y, I get to T square Y, et cetera. But we assume that Y was minimal. So this has to be all of Y. In particular, it includes the point Y, which means that Y is in the closure of this orbit. But that means exactly that there's some sequence of points T and K, Y, which converges to Y. So we have basic, if 
fact that if we're looking for recurrent points, it's enough to look for minimal sets. So the next lemma says that in fact, there always exist minimal sets. In fact, using Zorn's lemma, one sees that if I take an, there are invariant sets, the whole space is an invariant set. If it's not minimal, then there's something smaller. If that's not minimal, there's something smaller and so on. Now, Zorn, using Zorn's lemma, we can show that there is a smallest, um, there's a smallest, in other words, there's su some subset which is invariant and closed, but has nothing smaller in it with that property. So that means every compact system has, has a minimal subset. And therefore, by what we, by the previous lemma, every compact system has, um, has recurrent points. And to, to prove the statement that we made above about, about this torus, that, the, that every point in, the, in this T squared, every, every pair theta phi is in fact recurrent, this will follow if we show that the torus itself, T squared, is itself a minimal set. In other words, there's nothing inside the torus um, which is actually smaller. In fact, that will immediately um, give us the fact that every point is recurrent. Could we have the next slide? Okay, because so now we're going to look at this a little bit more closely. Um, now this transformation T, I, re I rewrote the transformation here, T theta phi goes into theta plus alpha, phi plus two theta plus alpha. This has, a, this has a, a, an interesting property, namely um, the, uh, well, you can look at the formula underneath it, which says that if I leave the theta alone, but I add rho, think of rho as a rotation. If I add rho to phi, then when I apply T to it, then the row is added to the new, new phi just by applying the formula. Um, that, what, what does that mean uh, uh, sort of geometrically? If we look at this picture of the, of the torus or the square as we're representing it, if I have the point x that goes into tx, by the way, the theta, that means the theta of this point x goes into theta plus alpha. And if I have a point y, which has the same theta, but it has a different phi, namely it's rho, distance rho above x, then the then t of y will be exactly the same distance from t of x. What that means, uh, um, so I think of it as a sort of rotating, rotating by rho. And um, um, so if I have a subset z, and look at the next set, next picture. If I have a subset Z, and as soon as the subset Z is invariant, then if I shift it up by rho, if I shift the whole um, the whole set by rho, rotate it, then that will also be an invariant set because everything that happens to to one point on 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 Z, the same thing basically happens just rho steps above. If I'm if I'm rho rho distance rho above. And uh, so the set that I've indicated in, in this diagram, if Z is invariant, then that set above is also invariant. Now I use the fact that, the, um, that there exists some invariant set. So now let's take this Z in this picture to be an invariant, to be, a, to be I'm sorry, there exists a minimal invariant set. So let's take this Z to be a minimal invariant set. As I've indicated it, it's not necessarily, on the face of it, it doesn't have to be a graph. Uh, it's easier for me to draw a graph. But why, in the picture, you see that it covers the whole base line, that above every point in, the, in, in this interval, where you see theta, theta plus alpha, every point in this interval is covered by some point in Z. Why is that? Because the image of Z, whatever Z would be, its image is a closed set on the line, on the interval, which is invariant going from theta to theta plus alpha. But now by Kronecker's theorem, such to be, if it's invariant under adding alpha, it's invariant under ending, adding n alpha, it's invariant under that dense set, so it must be everything. That's the reason that this Z, I don't know how thick it is on the face of it, but what I do know is that it covers every point, every theta. Okay, so that means that some point, well, every point of Z now is a recurrent point. 
But now if every point, if I lift everything by rho, everything is happening, everything that happens on Z is happening also on the lift by, by rho, that means a recurrent point, the, the, the point above the point on Z, which is recurrent, if I lift that up on this, on this dotted line, if I lift that up to the to the uh, to any of these shifted shifted z's, then I again get a recurrent point. Since every point of z is recurrent, that means every point above it is is recurrent, and that means that proves the theorem that every point is is recurrent. I've I've said a lot, but these are the ideas very ideas are very simple, and uh, I might say that this particular proof, uh, as far as I know. Has never appeared in print, and so you can, you're the first people that I've told that I've proved it in, a, in, in this way. But it's a very simple application of, of ideas from, from dynamics, the idea of a, of a minimal system, the idea of an orbit. And, and what we see is that by studying the sequence, you look at the sequence, the sequence on, on the integers, e to the 2 pi i, n squared alpha, you don't know what to do with it. But when you see it in, in, in terms of a, of a dynamical system, the dynamical system has a certain structure, and we can make use of that. And, um, and here, we've, it turns out to be a, dist a minimal system. Now, the kind, of, um, the kind of system that appears here will appear later, and I want to uh, mention a property of, it, of this particular system, which is called distality. A system is distal in the um, you know, notice I have this transformation. I have x and a transformation t. This, 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 the system is distal if points stay apart. Actually, two points which come close together and they're called proximal. Distal is the opposite. Distal says that whenever I have a pair of points x1 and x2, there's some number delta, some positive number, so that the, the orbits never get closer than delta. The distance between t to the n of x1, and the same t to the n of x2 is always bigger than this delta. Now this example, the example we have here, it's easy to see that it's a distal system. Why? Because if I have, first of all, if x and y are on the same, on the same vertical line, then they say exactly the same distance apart um, because of this condition which we, which we indicated, that t of x and t of y are exactly the same distance. In fact, here, the delta is the distance between x and y. Now, what if x and y are on different, different vertical lines? Well, the vertical lines move by adding alpha, so they're always a certain distance apart. So again, if they're on different vertical lines, the points remain distant also. So this, this system, it, it turns out, which uh, I became interested in because of n squared alpha, has this other special property of being distal, that's a, something called an isometric system, which is a system in which the distance between points is exact is preserved. Isometries, the transformations work by isometries. Obviously, that's distal. And actually, until this example came about, one didn't know that there are other examples of distal which are not isometries. This example you can check and you can see that it's not an isometry, no matter how you how you define the the metric it will not it won't become an isometry. So this is interesting because of the as an example of uh, it's interesting in a dynamical theory as as an example of distal which is not um, which is not an isometry. Later on we'll be talking uh, a little more about this uh, about distality. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. Here we go into an entirely different area of, uh, of, of uh, well, number theory and combinatorics. And this, I'm going to speak about a, a theorem of Schur, which um, stems from number theory and, and is, in some sense, um, the foundation for what's called combinatorial number theory. Somehow, the notions that come in are, are notions that are also familiar in, in combinatorics. and there, it's, it would be it's referred to as as Ramsey theory. And nowadays, there's something referred to as ergodic Ramsey theory, where where one gives where one shows the relationship between ergodic theory and certain questions, basically in combinatorial um, 
combinatorial number theory, that aspect of, our, of Ramsey theory. So let's start. Well, how does uh, how does Schur get into this picture? Well, he started with the Fermat, what Fer, what's now Fermat's theorem that for m bigger than two, you can you cannot solve in integers x to the m plus y to the m equals z z to, z to the m. Now, sure, asked the question, well, maybe we can prove the impossibility of solving the equation by showing the impossibility of solving a, a, a congruence. If, if you can't have x to the m plus y to the m congruent to z to the m for every p, then you can't, um, uh, then you can't have the equation. But what he, what he actually said, found out proving was not what he wanted. He found out proving that in fact it is solvable as soon as p is if p is a prime, and if p is large enough, then you can solve the congruence uh, x to the m plus y to the m is congruent to z to the m. <coughs> the the combinatorial lemma, which is uh, which sure uses to prove this uh, theorem about congruences, is the following: if you have a if you have a sufficiently sufficiently long interval of of integers, one up to some big n. Well, there's an n which depends on r. What is r? I break this interval of integers into r different sets in a completely arbitrary way, no matter how you break it up. If n is big enough, if n is bigger than n of r, then one of these sets is going to contain what's called, now it's called a sure triple. It's going to contain three numbers, x, y, z, with x plus y equal to z. How does he apply this? This um, I won't say anything about proving proving the lemma, although we could use this can be proved using dynamics, also. <clears throat> but um, I won't go into that aspect. Just to just as a point of interest, how does this relate to Fermat's theorem? Um, the, the idea here is a little bit of algebra. If we look at we look at the Galois field F P. I'm assuming P is a prime, and I take the multiplicative subgroup, and it, it turns out it because of, of the subgroup of each element raised to the power m, this will be a subgroup of, of index no bigger than n. Now, if I, I can take a set of representatives of this subgroup, that means that every that G itself can be written is partitioned in as a one times the subgroup G m union A2 times GM and so on. Well, here I'm in a position to apply Shaw's lemma. One of these, some AI for some IJ as I indicated, will have a sure triple, which means that the sum AJX to the M plus AJY to the M is equal to AJZ to the M. Now, because we're in a field, you can you can cancel AJ and here you have a solution to the to the congruence. At any rate, this is a nice connection between between a combinatorial theorem um, and this number theory, uh, why? What makes it a combinatorial th theorem is because you're looking at structures inside. Well, you have a partition of a big set with a certain structure, and then you can find in one of these sets you can find this structure. Now, people who are familiar with Ramsey's theorem. It's it, it also has that that kind of of a. Uh, uh, Case that, that you have a, some large sets, some large, you have a large graph, uh, a complete graph, and a large number of, of vertices, and you can color or partition the, the, the edges into a finite number of colors. Then the theorem is if, the, if it's big enough, then you'll find some sub, a complete subgraph um, of one color. And that means you're, in this partition, you partition the edges. Then you can find a, inside one of the one of the partition cells, you'll find the structure that you're looking for. Now, Schur himself actually uh, is interested in: uh, Can you generalize? Are there other properties which have this partition um, partition uh, property that that, that the uh, that there that you can find them in any subset, of, and you can find them in some cell of a partition. Let's go on to the next slide. Here it turns out, here it turns out that I think that he was a, he was the one originally to suggest what is now called Van der Waarden's theorem. This we have the next next slide, if we can have that. Um, next slide says that if um, 
Um, this was uh, actually called Baudet, a, a conjecture of Baudet, which was solved by solved by um, uh, Van der Waarden. And um, uh, the conjecture says that if we have a, if we partition again, if we partition the numbers from one to n in where n is sufficiently large into um, into some fixed number of sets, then in one of those sets there will be an arithmetic progression of a given length. Of course, the number that number has to be very large, and it depends on both the number number of cells that we partition the set into, and the length of the and the length of the uh, arithmetic progression that, that we need. Um, could I have the next slide? At any rate, the um, um, Van der Barn showed that this is in, indeed true, and in in uh, Erdős, this is kind of issue that Erdős was very interested in, and and his point was the point that he he wanted to set, say which of these sets, um, contain, which of these sets, what can we say about the set that we know is going to contain an L-term arithmetic progression? Now the idea is that uh, let's let's suppose just for sake of um, is in order to fix things, let's suppose that that R is ten. We divide the set into ten subsets. Then at least one of those subsets, one tenth in one of those subsets, at least one tenth of the numbers. Um, uh, in other words, the number of, of of integers appearing in that set is at least one tenth of n. In other words, that set has a certain density, positive density. Here I have a uh, you can formulate the uh, the for the conjecture of Erdős and Turan relating to this in an rather than in a finite form in an infinite form, introducing the notion of, of density, the density of a set of an infinite set or a set in inside all the numbers, is basically the limb soup of the proportion of that of the set that's inside the interval one to n and divide that by n. So if you divide it, if you if I divided all the integers into um, R sets, then one of the integers would have to have um, would have to have density at least uh, R one over R. If R is ten. Then one of the sets would have to have density one tenth. <clears throat> the erdős turan conjecture is that if I have any set, I don't have to talk about a partition now. But if I have any set which has density Pos which is positive, not a tenth, or a hundredth, whatever it is, a millionth, whatever it is, then it's going to have arbitrarily large, that set has uh, contains arbitrarily large arithmetic progressions. So this is now known as Samaradi's theorem. It was proved in 1975 and very complex um, and very, very uh, profound uh, combinatorial reasoning. But we want to, what, um, what we claim is that this um, is that this is an example where where if you look at if you look at a dynamical system producing the set this set of a positive density in some in somehow then um, then that gives you some better picture of uh, of uh, what's going on and enables you to prove this in some sort of systematic way. Can we have the next slide? The um, next slide brings the what we call the ergodic correspondence principle. The uh, namely, instead of talking about a function on the integers, you can talk about a subset of the integers. You can think of that as the function. The, the you can identify that with a function, the, the characteristic function of the set. And so this the car, this ergodic correspondence says that if I have a subset with positive density. Then there is an ergodic measure-preserving system, X T mu, a subset which is going to correspond to the E, a subset, a measurable subset of the space X, which has whose measure is the same as the density of the set E. So it'll be positive, set of positive measure. And for any, it, it'll it'll sort of reflect what happens to the set A under the transformation t reflects what happens to the set e under translation by integers so if i look at if i um 
look what well, let's look to the right the right hand side i look at the points t in mine i i pick any sequence m1 up to mk and i look at the intersection of uh, t, the points that go into a under m1 steps the point going to a under m2 steps and so on that finite intersection whatever that is it bounds from below the density of the of the numbers the number that goes into e under m1 when i add m1 numbers that go into e when i add m2 and so on um so that you get a configuration in this in in this um intersection on the left you have a certain configuration of integers in in the set to the right you have a certain subset and the statement is that the so the uh, density of the set of integers is bounded by the by the measure of the of the set of uh, of these the set inside the measure space i might say that um this may look mysterious but actually if i turn things around if i start with the uh, with an ergodic transformation i start with the set a and um and i have this uh, this arbitrary sequence of this k tuple then the um then in fact there is a there is a subset e of integers in fact many of them for which instead of an inequality you have an equality and that's just if you think about it it's this is simply the ergodic theorem that there will be orbits that go through the orbit that meets the set this intersection on the right hand side that orbit meets the set in density uh in a density equal to the to the measure of the set what i have what we have in this ergodic correspondence is just inverting the um the ergodic theorem and saying that starting with the set i can find the ergodic system which which reflects it okay now how does that help us with some Arady theorem if we happen to choose the m's as being multiples of of a single m m 2m 3 up to the km then what what is meant by the set on the left, the e minus m intersect e minus two m, etc., up to e minus km. What 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 can we say about a point in that set? What a number in that set? That's a number. When I add m one, when I add m, it's in e. When I add two m, it's in e. When I add km, it's in, and so on. That is an arithmetic progression of length k. So if I if I can prove that under the if if one can prove that under the under the conditions that a the set a has positive measure that for, for the sequence for the particular sequence m 2m and so on which you see in the lower uh, lower line if i look at a intersect t minus ma etc that for some m this is going to have positive measure then by our correspondence principle that means that the uh, that there will be an arithmetic progression in the set e this this uh, this um, phenomenon is called multiple recurrence. It's called multiple recurrence because even if even if I just look at a intersect t minus m a, just to uh, occur once, that's already a theorem. That's the famous Poincaré recurrence theorem, which can be proved quite quite easily. And this is multiple recurrence that you recur not only you can return at some time m, but also return at time two m, three m, and so on. That's, Let's go on to the next slide where we talk about in structure theorems. The uh, the idea for you, you may ask, well, why are we better off looking at a looking at a dynamical system than just looking at the set, the set of positive density itself? Isn't it easier to look at integers than to which we all understand than to look at dynamical systems? Could I ask the next next slide? The point is that when you look a dynamical system in space on a space compact space x th there is more structure as we saw in the in the previous situation there, were, there we had a distal system which we which we made use of and um here also we can make use of the structure of an ergodic system um that turns out that for the um uh, for in in general uh, Here's the the, the um, there is the here's a multiple recurrent there's a a, a um, version a a um, um, there's a version of the what we call the ergodic the ergodic um, the ergodic Samarady theorem 
this should appear on the next slide. At any rate, the ergodic, the ergodic sum radii theorem simply says that this is true, that for any um, 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 that, uh, well, actually, here it is in the previous slide, that in fact it is true that given a, a set of positive measure, then uh, positive measure A, then there is some M such that the, uh, um, well, actually, this appears below on, on the bottom of this of this particular page. Um, you have what I call EST, the ergodic Samaradi theorem, that if I have a subset of X with positive dense, positive measure, then for any length K, there, this measure of this intersection, there, there is an M such that the intersection is is positive. This so-called multiple recurrence. Um, Now, this is, yes, I think I want the next page. I'm sorry, the, um, no. okay, uh, now, um, here, here in this next slide, I make a remark, um, as the, the, the idea of using, um, uh, uh, the idea of using properties or patterns of patterns of recurrence in ergodic systems is useful not just for the for the Samaradi theorem, but it, it tells you about other patterns that must exist in sets of positive density. The, uh, for example, uh, um, let's consider this kind of uh, of, a, of a progression a a plus m a plus m squared a plus m cubed. Not, not that the distances are all the same, but that one is the square of the other, the other is the cube of the other. This is also true, and this can also be proved by showing the same kind of same kind of recurrence in uh, in um, um, in er ergodic systems. That the, corres what the corresponding interse the corresponding intersection in is always always has uh, at some for some m has has positive uh, positive measure. Uh, could we go on to the next slide? Um, next slide. We, um, um, we discussed this this property. The um, 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 well, so so we ask. Um, uh, we, we want to prove that the, um, the it is a theorem that the uh, this ergodic uh, Samaradi theorem that we do get this kind of multiple recurrence, and in um, in these next slides I show there are two examples where where it's quite easy to show two kinds of of ergodic systems for which it's quite easy to show that that in fact you do have this multiple recurrence, and. One of one system is what's is just an isometric system. Now, the suppose that the transformation T preserves a preserves on met, preserves a metric. Then actually, you can reduce this. Then all the transformation, all the powers of T belong to uh, some kind of compact group. And then the this multiple recurrence follows from um, from the fact that um, that. Um, when you on, on a group, it, as soon as you get close to the identity, if you have some trend, if you have some rotation on the group which gets close to the identity, then the square of that again will be close to the identity and again uh, close, of course. And then when you apply that to a set of positive measure, a uh, number of these, uh, any given number of these power of these, um, you see, uh, some. If I have a rotation in a group, the um, um, well, actually, this in, in below. In the, um, below. Um, some power of, of t will, will be close to the identity. Now, if I have g n close to the identity, then all the various powers of of, of g n will be close to the identity. And then, the, if given a set a of positive measure, that intersection will be will tend to the measure of a, and particularly will be positive, and this will give you a uh, this will give you the uh, the um, arithmetic progression or your geometric progression. So that's the case of a uh, of an isometry. 
uh, top part of the page, I discuss uh, the other the other example, which is an isometric system, and um, that's where uh, I, I'm sorry, which is a weak mi weak mixing system. Now, the definition of weak mixing, which I like, it's not the standard definition, is to, if you look at the space, the space is a square, and I have these three sets, A, B1, B2, and ergodicity meant that from, and I assume they all have positive measure, ergodicity meant that from A, you get into, into either you can get into B1 at what, some time, you'll get into B2 at some time. Weak mixing says that you can get into both of these at the same time. In other words, there'll be two points in A and an N, a number N, that in N steps you get from one point into B1, the other point into B2. Now these two systems, these two kinds of systems, the isometric system, which preserves distance, and the weak mixing system are in some sense absolute opposites of one another. Because obviously an isometric system can't be weak mixing because unless it's trivial, because if you take the set A to be a small set, all the points are close together, and you take B1 and B2 to be far apart, no two points can at the same time, one B and B1, the other B and B2. So these are opposite types of behavior, and in both of them, it's easy to show that you have this multiple recurrence. Now, if it were true that every system is just a, a product, say, of weak mixing and, and, um, and I, I, isometric, then that would give us an easy proof of the ergodic summary theorem. This isn't quite true. It's no reason it should be true, but it's in some sense almost true in the, in the sense that every ergodic system is built up from, from what you might call um, weak mixing steps and, and isometric steps. In fact, um, here, uh, can I have the next slide, please? Um, um, we need the, um, um, well, actually the, um, yeah, uh, let's go on to the next slide because I don't have time to, but the detail here I give, a, I show how one proves, proves by a kind of ergodic theorem for weak mixing systems, how one gets to the result, uh, how one proves directly the, uh, um, how one proves the, um, uh, the uh, recurrence, the multiple recurrence property. Um, but the um, point I want to emphasize in these last minutes that I have um, is the idea of a structure theorem. And it, this sort of answers the question, what, as we indicated before, why are you better off dealing with a with complex notion of dynamical system or ergodic system rather than the, just the integers? Yeah, the reason is that for for these systems built on depending on a space with a certain kind of structure, there's a possibility of a structure theorem, namely uh, identifying the structure. How is this space built up from from other spaces? Now, the example the example that we had early on in our first part of this discussion, this uh, this the torus torus is an example of um, what's what's called a skew product. Here I define in this page, this slide we define what's, what I mean by a skew product. I have one system X, a measure mu and the transformation T, and I have just another measure space Z with a measure nu on it. And I'm, I can define a, on, I can define a new, a new space, just taking the product space, X times Z, and I take a measure, namely the product measure, mu cos nu. Now I will get a on this product space. I will get a a um, an invariant measure, a measure that's invariant. If I define the transformation t tilde as on the first variable, I just do the t t x. Like in that, if you remember that example, theta went into theta plus alpha. That was my transform. That was my base transformation, and that I keep in this t tilde. But the next variable doesn't go into it doesn't go into fixed transformation, but a, a transformation that depends on x. That's rx of y, where I assume that rx preserves the measure nu. And then it's not hard to see that t tilde will preserve the product measure. So the, um, um, 
Now, if, if, if the space Z happens to be a sphere, for example, and Rx is a rotation of that sphere, then, then, we, then we have what we call an isometric extension. And more generally, you can have isometries. If, if the Rx is preserved, not just the, not just the measure, but preserve the distance, then we have what we call an isometric extension. The, 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 um, the skew product is, is then an isometric extension. Now, the opposite of an isometric extension is, is, is a weak mixing extension. And um, if the formal definition, I think, is on the next slide. You can have the next slide. The, um, it's, it's the absence, it basically, it's the absence of a distance function. Um, see, in the definition, the second definition, a skew product is a weak mixing extension. If, um, if you can't find something like a distance function on the, on the Z, which is invariant. Now, there's no function on, on X cross Z cross Z, which is invariant under the transformation applied to Z cross Z, X and Z cross Z. Whereas if it would be an isometric extension, the distance function would be an invariant function. At any rate, these are sort of two opposite kinds of skew, skew products, extensions. And the, um, uh, the main structure theorem is that every ergodic measure preserving system is built by take, starting from nothing, starting from a single point and taking, and taking as much as, as taking many, many either distal extensions, either isometric extensions or weak mixing extensions. Uh, if you just, just take isometric extensions, it's called distal, because in fact, those are distal transformations. And in fact, it's enough to take a distal, um, distal system and take this Q product with a weak mixing system. And what one does is prove the prove that the summer the, the this multiple recurrence behavior passes if it, if it's true on the base space. And I take either a weak mixing extension or an isometric extension. It the same the the, the multiple recurrence will hold also for this extension. And that's not difficult to show. The, um, so the main idea here is, is a structure theorem for arbitrary ergodic systems, that they're built up from certain kinds of systems, you might say, built up from certain components, and using the, using the correspondence principle. And as I indicated, I don't have time now to go into various examples. I mean, one example of a general, you can now generalize some radius theorem, for example, you have a, a, um, a higher dimensional version of some radius theorem, which uses similar ideas, say in two dimensions, instead of the group Z acting, you have Z squared acting and so on. And, uh, and you have the, also the, the idea that in, su in a subset of positive density, you can find, uh, you can find what corresponds to arithmetic progression there. From there, you can actually get very general kinds of of, of, uh, of configurations. And let me end with this uh, with this uh, you might say story um, in, in the movie of, of, about John Nash called The Beautiful Mind. One point, John Nash is, has a reputation of finding patterns where other people don't see them. And uh, he takes in, in this movie, he takes his girlfriend, who's later later becomes his wife. He takes her. Outside of the house, with his at, at night, with his, his a lot of stars in the sky, and he says to her, "Just tell me any any kind of object you want." She says, "Umbrella," and he looks in the sky and he shows her. If you look at these, I don't know, ten, twelve stars, they form. They're in the shape of an umbrella. Well, how do they, how can I? I said we can explain this now. The if you think of the stars as occupying each star being at least having a certain tiny diameter. And that the, the set of all stars, if you look at them as a, as a, uh, um, as a two-dimensional, you look at the two-dimensional picture that you see when you look at the stars, and if you assume, which is, is sort of a reasonable assumption that all, all the stars together, infinitely many of them, ideally have positive density, then it turns out that the, the Samaradi theorem in, in two dimensions that tells you that in fact, any finite configuration that you're looking for, you will find inside the stars 
if you're with a dilation, of course, you dilate it properly and shift it, you'll find that um, you'll find that configuration in the stars. Okay, thank you very much for your attention and listening. But then I, I hope at least some of the things have been clear. Thank you. <laughs> so good, so. Thank you very much, sir, for sharing your profound and priceless knowledge with us. It was full of passion and a pleasure listening to you, sir. Even all the viewers from uh, Facebook and YouTube are also welcoming you and uh, are enjoying your talk. And we are getting very positive feedbacks from all the viewers. Department of Mathematics and Gujarat University feel honored to have you on this virtual platform. Uh, to express more gratitude towards one and all, I would like to invite Dr. Ravi Kaur, Associate Professor, Department of Mathematics, for a word of thanks. Dr. Ravi Kaur. Thank you, Ron Bhai. Uh, so at the outset, uh, let me thank Professor Hillel Furstenberg for sharing his views uh, with the uh, viewers across the globe. Uh, it is always said that uh, in order to advance the applications, it is important, it is very important to advance the theories. And uh, with the uh, Nobel laureate Professor Hillel, uh, uh, Abel Prize laureate, uh, I wish that all the viewers have really got a, a good uh, idea about the advancement in the ergonomic theory that ergodic theory that uh, professor hillel has uh, described today uh, we are really honored to have you professor on board with us today and sharing your time with us uh, we thank the honorable minister uh, of education uh, shri bhupendra singh ji and shrimati vibhavari ben ji for sparing time with us uh, we also thank professor anju sharma madam uh, for for enlightening uh, us with the views about the uh, mathematics education uh, and the importance of the STEM education. Uh, all from uh, all uh, of us from the Department of Mathematics are really indebted to Professor Hillel for sparing his time uh, with his busy schedule and the time difference. Uh, I I wish. Uh, that more of the PG and the PhD students uh, really get inspired uh, by their talk. I thank uh, Professor Nita Madam for coordinating such a massive activity, such an important activity, which was a need for the hour. So I, with on uh, behalf of the mathematics department, uh, along with my colleague, Professor Srimali, uh, thank everyone every viewer also for sparing time with us and staying uh, with us live. Uh, it's, a, it's a massive viewage uh, in YouTube and Facebook. Uh, I again thank Professor Hillel. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for uh, sparing your time with us and sharing all your contributions made uh, and, and, and giving a future direction of research and applications to all our budding researchers. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Well, you're very welcome. It's been a pleasure for me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Hillel. Uh, Professor Ali said everything about viewers are quite impressed and uh, will get motivated by your informative talk. So thank you once again for accepting invitation from Department of Mathematics, Gujarat University. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you very much, for Professor Shah. Uh, um, I, know, I know you you've contributed a quite a bit in order to organize and coordinate between myself and and your country and your university. So thank you, and, and I'm grateful to you for the and to everyone here for the invitation. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. May I please make an announcement? Please make an announcement that feedback form will be sent in that email ID and certificate will be 
coming through feedback form yeah all the registered candidate uh, participants will get the feedback form in their uh, registered email id and the certificate will be uh, sent on the same id so thank you once again all the viewers for joining this wonderful session uh, a wonderful talk by abel prize laureate 2020 professor hiller firstenberg thank you once again have a good day thank you yeah mm -hmm.